Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. Today I'm going to show you some tips what to look for when you're buying a used snapper. First we're going to go out and look at a couple of things on mine that's in the driveway. Then we're going to come in and look at this model that I've got. This is my old 28 inch, <laughs> what's left of it. I stripped it down to the rear case and I'm going to keep this for a model so when somebody calls me and says, uh, my chain case has a problem, I can open it up and show them right here on this bench what to look for. So first, let's shoot outside and look at my snapper. <clears throat> okay, here's my 33 inch. I just got done rebuilding on all the videos that hopefully you've seen. This thing runs awesome. I, I love that engine. It starts up so easy. It's got plenty of power. I took this over to my father-in-law's last night and he trimmed a bunch of hedges. And they were probably the size of your little finger and three feet long. And he just had, well, he's got 300 feet of frontage. It's all hedge. And I just told him, I'll suck it up. Don't, leave, don't worry about it. And this thing just ate all of it. This, I can't say enough good about this baby. I love this machine. But if you're looking to buy a used snapper, first thing you want to do is check the engine out and make sure it runs good. When I call them up and tell them I'm coming over, I'll usually feel of the engine block and see if it feels warm. It should be as cold as the rest of the machine. That'll tell you if he's warmed it up for you so it starts good. It could have engine problems. Start it up, let it run for a while while you're talking to him. Tell him you want to tip it up and look at some internal parts on the drivetrain. I'm going to show you them inside. Drive it around the yard. Make sure there's no crunching or growling when you're running it. If it sounds good, pull it back and tip it up. Now the first thing you want to check is the slop in this tube. What I do is straddle the machine, grab onto this tube, and try to and lift. Now there's a little bit of slop there. That's normal. I have brand new bushings and my rear case the holes are fine. Let me show you a bad one when we get inside. When I lift it up on that one, I had almost a half an inch of play. The next thing you're going to want to do is tip the machine up. Guess I'm going to have to reposition the camera now. You're going to want to tip the machine up, grab both front tires, and make sure that tube turns in the rear case. If it doesn't and it's locked up, then you got a problem. So let's go back in the shop. I suppose at that point you could check to see what the bearings are like in this. Uh, I don't have any wiggle at all in there. You want to check the bearings on the spindle and see how they turn. This isn't going to turn very free because there's a break in there that holds us from turning. So don't let that bother you if this turns really hard. Let's go inside. Okay, this is my old 28 inch that I had for, oh golly, I don't know, 25, 27 years. I rebuilt the whole drivetrain about 20 years ago, and it was still working pretty good, but it, it's got some issues. Now, the thing you want to check when you lift on that pipe, your front structure, they call that, here is a, this is your rear case with all the parts. This is a rear case, 
off a machine I bought just for parts in the engine. Let me show you the problem it has. Now the thing you want to check, there's two different styles that are on these rear cases. And for a while they changed them and uh, apparently they found out that was a problem. Where your tube goes through from your front axles, they call that a front structure. It goes right through here. Now you can see this one's hollow. There's nothing in here. This one is supposed to have two plastic washers that allows that pipe to turn in here and they act as a bushing. This is the one I bought when I lifted on that tube. It moved almost a half an inch. It had some other issues. Uh, the engine was good, so I ended up buying it just for parts. I told them I'm going to part it out. So I got a deal on it. Now when they make these, this is one piece of steel here that's stamped and bent. Your battery sits over here. Your electronics are in here for your safety switches and your starter button if you have that style. And when they stamp that out, through this hunk of steel, they roll the metal inside of here to make a bearing surface. I can get that a little closer. You can see how thick this looks. It looks like it's about oh, 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch thick right here, but it's not. This is all the thicker it is. They just stamp that and roll it in. Now the problem it had, they never changed the plastic bushings. And see how you got your material here? This is gone. It's wore, it's wore right out. It wore through the bushing and right into the case. You could fix this if you had a good welder. He could cut this out square, bend a little piece to match this radius, and weld it in there. But he's got to weld it from up in here. You don't want any weld in here where the pipe's got to go through. So I just figured, this is parts. We're going to tear it apart. Let me show you the other issues you want to look for when you're checking one of these out. Okay, I'm going to try to stay out of your way because, hey, who wants to look at me anyway? This is your yoke. This is the next thing you want to check. This is your yoke link. This little piece here. This comes off. You don't get this when you buy the yoke. This bolt hooks on to your clutch link guide. It's a little nylon that guy slides up and down in there and a track. Now this yoke has a spring on it that goes from either one of these two holes. You can see the gouge marks from the spring and they go up and they hook to one of these three holes. That gives you some adjustment. When your clutch starts to wear, you can pull the spring down from this top hole to this bottom hole and you can move the spring up on these three holes. That will pull your clutch disc tighter into your, uh, I forgot what it was called, your drive disc. <laughs> Sorry about that. Too many names. Now this one is out of that machine and this is totally shot. This was another reason I got him down on his price. Your chain case slides inside of here and that's what does your shifting. And the shape of the top of this should be exactly the same as what the bottom is. See the wear you have on here? I would say this person drove this in probably second and third all the time. This much wear is going to give you problems with your clutch. This thing has, when it's in there, it has very limited movement that pushes your clutch disc into your drive disc. With this much wear, you're going to have problems. It may not even go 
in second and third. Fourth and fifth over here don't look too bad. But again, this is supposed to be straight across there. Not all this. This corner here is supposed to look like this sharp corner. It's gone. So it looks to me like he did a lot of shifting in reverse. So these, uh, if this is bad on one you're looking at, you can tell them, hey, these are $85 new. And if you could find a good used one, I suppose you could buy that. But this is going to be your biggest wear item on this machine outside of your bushings. Now to get to the bushings, if this machine was sitting on the ground, let me turn this a little, all the weight would be pushing up on this tire. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tire and we're going to push up on it and then pull down. We're looking for how much slop is in this bushing. Now some of the bigger machines like my 33 inch that is a commercial model they've got bearings in these side covers they don't have bushings. I don't know if you can see that wiggling but that's some slop. Now that's not bad it's not going to give you a problem but it's only going to get worse. The biggest issue this machine has is side play. You can see that moving. That's probably three-eighths of an inch. And what causes that is when you mow on a hill. If you go up the hill and down the hill, you're okay. But if you're mowing sideways on a hill where all the weight is pushing against this bushing, that's going to wear them out. What's in there? Here's a side cover with an old bushing in it. This happens as a piece of side where the differential is. And when you press this bushing in, you can see there's a little lip right here that stops the bushing from going all the way through. This is your wear surface. That's what's wearing out on this one. Now, if you have if that's the only issue, having side play, that's very easy to fix. All you have to do, let me move this. All you have to do to fix your side play is you loosen up and pull this boot back and get it out of your way. It would help to shift it over in the fifth, move this boot. And you can buy some thrust washers. They're nylon. They're shaped like a C. They have a little opening in them that's smaller than what the axle is in diameter. You take them bushings and you just snap them in there until all your side play is gone. You want about a 30 second and that's it. You get them snapped in, put your boot back on, that problem is fixed. Another problem talking about the boots, you want to check those. If they're ripped, these are in good, really good shape, and these are 20 years old. Because I put new ones on when I, when I rebuilt this. This keeps all the dirt, that keeps all the dirt off of your hexed shaft. This is a shaft that's mounted in there between your bushings and your chain case slides on that as you shift it. If this shaft gets full of dirt and uh, grass clippings or whatever else just grinds up and blows back in here, this thing is not going to shift at all. I mean it's going to bind up so bad you'll end up bending your shifter trying to get this thing to slide. That's the issue you want to watch for when you're checking these boots out. Now another problem you're going to have with extensive side play, your differential cover. See how this one's got a big groove in it cut in here? That's from the chain 
inside of this differential because of all the side play it was shoving it was pulling it that way because it fits in here like this and it was eating right through this case you can see how it's it's even raised the outside to the point where it's ready to break right through now this side this bearing or bushing excuse me is lubricated from the differential your differential is full of grease I use gear lube and when you fill it it comes out between the axle and the bushing and there is a little boot out here with a seal in it a lip seal and that keeps the grease from coming all the way out but it lubricates that bushing so the bushing on this side will usually last three times as long as that one because if I can show you let me wiggle this thing right here is a grease fitting that greases this bushing do you know how many people don't even know that's there and that's what wears out the bushing on that side replacing the bushing is not a big deal I show that in one of the videos oh golly it's probably back in four of seven or five of seven it shows you how to push them out and push new ones in it's really pretty simple another issue that these things have let me move this camera is a shifter right here where this slides I gotta push the clutch in somehow right here where this slides on that 33 inch I rebuilt this plate from the edges of the shifter were gouged right in about a sixteenth of an inch it was pretty bad and that was binding it up so it wouldn't shift good so I took this plate off took this assembly apart I welded the low spots ground them off flush and these little thrust washers they have in here I put two of them in there so that would they that way they act as a bearing surface and they they rub together and it won't wear the case out so quick now speaking of grease fittings don't forget this one it greases the shaft that helps this thing that helps this thing shift this slides into a tube that's welded to this case and you want to keep that greased you want to keep this bushing over here greased now that's the biggest stuff you want to check out when you want to buy one of these things used definitely check out your yoke check out the slop in the bushings your side play and just slop in the bushing in general check out up here when you lift on that tube when it's on the ground see how much slop you got in that see if it turns now something I didn't mention on this rear case when I told you about the way the tube goes through here for a short time the factory thought it was a better idea to weld a pipe in here so you'd have full contact and you'd have better wearing and the bushings that went through went halfway through the pipe from both sides so you had total contact and it had a better wear surface so they thought well what really happened what really happened with that tube going through this piece of pipe if your yard was nice and flat like mine is not so when you're driving your front tires are stationary all the time you're go you might be going up and down a hill my yard is bumpy I guess you could say and the front tires are constantly tipping like this that keeps this pipe turning 
inside of here. Keeps it turning if you have that tube. Chances are you'd be alright if you could squirt some oil in there. Now these people that have these immaculate yards and that front tires never pivot, them things rust solid. You can't break them loose. A friend of mine at work had one. We had to strip the machine. We had to heat this pipe up with a torch and darn it get it red hot so we could bust that thing loose and get it out of there. And then we took a hone, we melted all the plastic bushing out because once you throw heat to it, that starts melting. Honed it out, he put new bushings in, and it ran pretty good after that. But if you have one of them with that pipe style, some winter when you're bored, <laughs> yeah right, pull that thing out of there, smear a bunch of grease in it, and shove it back in. You'll have to take the belt off your mower deck to do that. But if you have any more questions on buying a used machine, email me. And I'll be more than happy to call you if you put your phone number in there. And I can explain to you what to look for, what not to do, how much to pay maybe for a used one. This one that was pretty well shot, I gave him 100 bucks for it. Because the engine ran good. And there's a lot of parts in here that I can use. Um, a good chain case. One of these. This chain case, complete, just the way you see it. I don't know if you get the clutch. I'm not sure. 575 bucks if you need one of these. And you don't get the brake with it either. So I pick them up if I can get them cheap, I strip them down, I shelf the parts, and when I need them I pull them off the shelf. I either sell them or I use them when I rebuild another machine. Got any questions, send me an email. It's jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. It's the thumbs up and the amount of views that shove these videos around when somebody types in snapper problems, it'll see mine and it'll shoot it over to them so they can see it. But you got to have the likes in there and the views or it's not going to move around. I am on Facebook, same thing with that. You can share these videos with friends that have snappers. And uh, I just want to try and help as many people as I can. If you send me an email for some questions, Send me the state you're living in, because I've got a map over here, and just for something to do, I'm keeping track of all the states that I reach out and touch. And come on, you guys, out on the West Coast, I need some of them states. So until then, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.